Greetings Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we are looking at a question from Paul, KC1KMM. Interesting question. He says uh, he's grateful he came across my videos several years ago. Okay. He says, I currently own hamstick style antennas for several bands and recently purchased the Chameleon CHA Spider ASB mount. And uh, Callum, if you could stick a picture of that in here from the Chameleon antenna website. To be able to switch between four bands for events such as field day. Each antenna pair is optimally tuned for a specific frequency, and you get four pairs on this. Okay. Um, it is the same kind of thing as the M, uh, MFJ, um, let's see, I think it's called, they call it the uh, uh, octopus. Okay. Except that the unit that actually holds the antennas, the hub, is much much stronger in the chameleon one. Okay, uh, each antenna pair is optimally tuned within this designated band however I'll be using an external tuner to help widen my range when changing frequencies. You won't widen it much because as you get away from the tuned frequency on these things the uh, SWR climbs rather steeply on the lower bands, uh, even 20, I don't think it covers all of 20. Uh, it may cover all of like 15 or something like that. Um, okay, uh, the promoted advantage of the CHA Spider ASB is that the transmitted RF signal will choose, and we now have sentient RF here, wow, will choose the appropriate antenna pair However, if I use the tuner, it will only tune the appropriate band antenna pair, or will it try to tune all four pair regardless of the designated band? Okay, let's uh, first of all take a look at what this thing is. This is a box. I'm looking down at the top. It's an octagonal box, and it's made of fairly sturdy steel. And each of these has a... a a uh, uh, place where you can screw in hamsticks. Two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, not very well designed. Each of these is a hamstick. Now, I did a review of the MFJ Octopus so named because it's got eight legs out there. So if you have an 80 meter hamstick here, you will put an 80 meter hamstick here. Now what's a hamstick? It's composed of two parts. It's got a base, black, which is kind of wound lazily, and then there is a loading coil, and then wound lazily up to here, and then there's what's called a stinger, sticking out of it which is uh, usually bright it's uh, spring steel coming out of it and they're all about the same length except that the loading coil changes and this is used designed to be put on a very powerful magnet mount on a car or truck to be a um, mobile antenna at HF now because of the loading coil the Q is high that means that the amount of bandwidth the antenna covers is low. Now you tune these things by pushing this stinger in and out and there's a little uh, screw lock on here to keep it the right way and you have to tune each of them. Now the idea is if you take these and put them opposite each other you get a dipole, a loaded dipole. Yes you do and yes it works fine but you have to tune both sides to the same frequency so that they're the same length of the stinger in there. This can take a little work to set up, okay? And you get that in there and you will find that if you send, these are all connected in parallel. This side 
one, two, three, four connected together and are the hot side and these are connected to the ground side of the coax. Should there be a ballon in here? Yes, there should be a ballon in here. Is there a ballon in here? No, there is not. It's usually fed with coax. Okay, now, what happens, you've got an 80 meter, 40 meter, say 20 meter and 10 meter in there, okay, and you feed it with 80 meters, and you feed it on the right frequency that you've previously tuned for. Which antenna is going to resonate? Well, the one that's going to resonate clearly is the 80 meter antenna, okay? Now, if there are harmonics in your uh, uh, signal, which there should not be, uh, it might cause the 40 to resonate, but hopefully you don't have harmonics up there if you do something's wrong with your radio. Okay, it works on a principle of resonance. The only ham sticks that are active are the ones that correspond with the frequency that you send out. Now, do you see anything in here that looks familiar? The answer is yes. This is simply a fan dipole, somewhat reconfigured. Now remember fan dipole, you take, here's an 80 meter dipole and we'll break it in the center, okay, and we're going to feed this with coax. We'll skip the ballon. I've never really liked ballons on dipoles, but uh, it is best practice. Okay, and then you have, if that's 80, if, well, let's make this 40, so that's 33 feet, or about 10 meters. Okay, and here uh, we'll put one that's half of that, 16 and a half feet, uh, or 5 meters. So this would be the 10 meter, so on, let's see, 16 and a half, blah, 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 blah. anyway, we're going to have a 40 meter, 20 meter, um, and say a 10 meter down here okay now this is a fan dipole how does a fan dipole work the way a fan dipole works is that the only thing that resonates is the one that is tuned for that these others don't take any RF energy it's not like they choose not to antennas are not sentient and uh, they're not alive they can't think Okay, so now let's just rearrange this dipole a little bit. Let's take the 20 piece and put it up here. Okay, and let's take and, and get rid of it uh, from down here. And let's take this piece down here and get rid of this one down here. Do you see how we're starting to build a structure that looks like the octopus? Okay, and then let's replace this full length with something that is much shorter but is loaded down here okay namely a hamstick now the interesting thing about the hamstick is even though it is physically shorter it is a electrically a dipole well it's a quarter wave quarter wave it's vertical Put two of them together, you've got a dipole. All right, it's a dipole. It electrically behaves like a dipole. It will give you about the same performance as a full-size dipole because it is resonant on that frequency, and it's got the parts in the right places that will resonate well. It's not the perfect thing. It is a bit of a compromise antenna, but when I put up my octopus from MFJ, I was amazed at how well it worked. I expected a severely compromised antenna. It was not. It worked just about as well as my vertical and uh, my other dipole out there. Okay, so the question is, I think what he's trying to get at here, the promoted advantage is the RF signal will go to the appropriate antenna. That is true. Now, if you use a tuner, will you be t you tuning the combination of the four? Remember the first rule of antennas, everything affects everything. However, in this case, 
you are going to be affecting the elements that are closest to resonance which will be the pair that goes with the band that you want. Now again I warn you these are high Q devices and so if you tune from one end of the band to the other like the general band down to um, the digital stuff okay FT8 and so on these are high Q devices if you have a one-to-one -one SWR up in the general band you could have an SWR down at the lower end of the band that is quite high okay so um, that's just something you've got to to take into account anytime you shorten a dipole it becomes a compromised device in this case compromised in terms of the bandwidth that can cover because it's loaded loading leads to high Q leads to high SWRs not very far away from the resonant so Paul KC1 KMM I hope that answers your question it's a very interesting one I have had the uh, the uh, MFJ dipole which uses ham sticks and um, but the mount the hub is not very physically strong uh, the one from uh, spider beam uh, not spider beam chameleon is much stronger so that would be a good one to get let's see what it is here it's hundred and sixty dollars for the hub that's a pretty good price it's pretty strong and it's got to handle these things in the wind and there's some weight involved and so on so there you have it if you would like to help support this channel financially you may do so by going to dkassler.com support and if you've watched this far I'd really encourage you to subscribe to this channel your subscription doesn't just remind you when there's new videos but it's also a signal to YouTube that this is a channel worth sharing. And so, until we next meet, 73.